Hey, my name is Shalise Ansola. And I'm Jonathan Rosales. And this is Oscar Mayer Wiener. And this is Cults to Consciousness, where we discuss leaving high demand religions or organizations and finding healing and independence through awareness and true individual sovereignty. On this channel, we interview cult survivors, people who are leaving, speaking out, telling their stories, being vulnerable. And we could not be more happy that we have reached one year on YouTube. Hey, a year ago, July 16th, Shalise posted the very first episode, the inaugural episode, Why She Left Mormonism. She also broke down the bite model, Stephen Hassan's bite model. And I remember I told you, I was like, if we hit 10,000 subscribers the first year on YouTube, that's a big deal. 20,000 is just insane. So the fact that we've hit 70,000 subscribers, we just hit it. And this is our 70th episode. I can't, I can't even process what that is like. I'm just out of my mind. I just can't believe all of the support, right? Yeah. Everyone's been super kind with all of the comments we get. Everyone is amazing. And we've built this community. We're continuing to create this community. Yeah, we are just over the moon at the support for not only us, but for these people who are coming on and telling their stories. And so we thought it would be fun to honor them, all of our guests from the first year, by giving their advice, their Linda Listen moments. What's a Linda Listen? A Linda Listen is... Listen, a li listen, you listen, listen, Linda. It comes from that little viral video with a toddler. He's arguing with his mom. I don't know if he wants cupcake or something, but he's like, Linda, listen, Linda, honey, honey, listen. And oftentimes when you are in a cult, you are treated in the way that the toddler is treated where you just can't have a voice. And finally, you have you are fed up, you've had enough, and you say, no, you're going to listen to me. So I think it's kind of a fun way to take back our power and to say a sassy statement to someone who's pissed us off, or a lot of our viewers take it in the inspirational route, which is fun too. Here right now, the 70th episode, 70,000 subscribers. We want to celebrate you guys, and we want to celebrate our guests, every guest that we have had on. We're going to do a compilation of all of the Linda Listens, aka all of the best takeaways from the cult survivors and guests that we've had on the show. Enjoy. Our species cannot continue with the old models of how we've been doing things, the old narratives that we've been telling ourselves, the old ways that we've been treating the earth, the old ways that we have been exploitive of one another, whether that's through labor or through emotional immaturity. It is a big picture that this earth has a lot of suffering in it. And I'm acutely aware that it needs it, it needs more joy in it and it needs more people waking up to it. And so that is like my niche is the lane of giving people laughter while they're also breaking away of like the old systems of the past that aren't serving our civilization anymore. Do you have a Linda Listen statement? Girl, I totally do. Linda Listen, the patriarchy is a scam and I want no part of it. You are try trying to control my body and um, I'm done with that shit. Yes, preach. I'll just say my Linda Listen, which is, um, you know, I would say to to President Nelson, uh, President Elks, President Iring, the top the top dogs in the church. Um, when you claim to speak for God, and you you claim to be the mouthpiece directly for God, you deserve to have every word you say in God's name scrutinized, and that's what I'm hoping to do with my Instagram page. Amazing, two hands up. Amen to that. Do you have a, a Linda Listen statement? One of the things that maybe I wanted to touch on too is um, the victim mentality a little bit. Mm. I feel like as people leave these religions and you go through this, this where you realize that you are this huge victim of your circumstances of what has happened to you. Um, you know, with me, being in an abusive marriage for 10 years through, you know, these cults that I dealt with. And I feel like one of the biggest mindset change is letting go of that victim mentality and realizing that I am in control of my life. Like I am the author of my story. And yes, there's been bad negative things that have happened to me, but I don't need to let it define me as a person. I feel like there's a lot of people that just hold on to that anger and it's not necessarily healthy. I understand it, but it's not a healthy way to, you know, move on. Linda, listen, you have victimized me in the past. 
but now I am the author of my own story and you have no control over me. So okay. this is a statement, a statement that you would like to say to an organization or anyone who has pissed you off or put you down. You know, the old adage is polite people don't talk about sex, politics or religion, but sex, politics and religion are really core to everything that, that's happening to us. I would hope that people can see beyond those things and try to find common ground underneath them and this this goes this goes for me too i have good friends who don't i don't see eye to eye with at all but we just connect on other basis and the basis we connect on is our humanity we need a little bit more empathy for everyone so whichever direction you want to go let's get your linda listen you know i think the big thing that really pisses me off if i'm gonna be honest is um, I think because I gather data, because I try and create a, 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 a truthful narrative about this group of people that I feel very passionate about, um, it drives me insane that most people that are talking about people that leave faith, that deconstruct, are the pastors, the leaders, the the family members, and what they share is bullshit. You know, they say they didn't really believe, they didn't know their Bible enough, they didn't have enough faith, or they just wanted to go and sin, right? Because again, morality. What's your morale? Oh, you just wanted to sin, right? Um, it's just so fucking frustrating. So, you know, I wish I wish those people would look at data. I wish those people would stop and think and consider and look at psychological development. They would consider anthropology and sociology and how to shape religion. And it's not going to happen. So I don't know. So I guess my my big thing I would say is to people that are in a position to change you are in a position to change you're listening to this podcast because you have changed you have grown up like this is hard work but it's supposed to be hard work this is growing up this is developing research and stop spewing narratives that are harmful about deconstruction is that correct that's correct but it's not going to happen <laughs> <laughs> and the second Linda listen is to our lovely listeners saying deconstruction is hard, but it is always worth it. And you are worth it. Yeah. I would say uh, Linda listen to Brian Houston, who was the former. And it feels good to say former because we got him to to quit. Uh, <laughs> former global senior pastor of Hillsong Church. I would say, Linda, listen, you hurt so many people. You need to take ownership for and take accountability for the damage you have done to millions of people around the world and pay me back for all of the therapy and pay me back for all of the hospitalizations and medication that I have had to take in order to recover for seeing the, the words, welcome home. Preach. Linda Lizard is about to get real. <laughs> Anything else you want to add? Hmm. Can I do a Linda Listen? Oh, she's got a Linda Listen. <laughs> I got a Linda Listen. Linda Listen. What, well, do, you, what I, do you got? I have to say it. Linda Listen. <laughs> Linda Listen. Linda Listen. <laughs> Be yourself and just love yourself for who you are. Good, bad, ugly, whatever. All the faults and the great things about yourself, but just be yourself and and look at others the same way and don't judge people and just Linda listen just be be you be you <laughs> be you yes. I love it can I do a Linda listen is that okay yeah, yeah? okay because <laughs> it's a perfect segue Linda listen if you are in one of these religions if you see it as this is the right way to go fine but don't be so closed off to other people's belief systems. Live this life. Don't live for some afterlife that may not come. Don't think that you necessarily need a religion to just do good. I think we could do good for the sake of doing good. Amen. <laughs> yeah, with the visual. Just the old. <laughs> Put that away. Listen, Linda. Sex can be such a beautiful, magical, spiritual experience if you are educated, if you are smart about it, if you have communication and consent, and your religion, your God, your bishop is not involved. Amen. I will attend the Church of XMLX any Sunday of the week. <laughs> The best thing that I can say is, listen, Linda, if you're getting upset that I'm asking for a, a, your profit and loss statement and the income disclosure statement, it sounds like you might be the problem. Or you might be in a cult. Or you might be in a cult <laughs> and you should probably call your dad. <laughs> 
All right, listen, Linda. Let me, I'm going to describe a guy for you, Linda. I'm going to describe a person who is completely obsessed with their own name and their own reputation and only wants to hang out with people who absolutely agree with everything they tell them to do and, in fact, thinks that people who disagree with him uh, should be murdered. Oh, that's a deal breaker, ladies. You don't want to be with a guy like that. And that's that's Jehovah. That's the kind of God that you are supposed to worship Plot as twist. a witness. That's a <laughs> that's a toxic guy. You want to get out of that kind of relationship. <laughs> oh my gosh, I did not see that coming. That's great. <laughs> well done. Linda, listen, set your priorities straight on maybe a type of God who loves you no matter what. I like it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Elders can be assholes too. So a lot of times, you know, especially in, in the more conservative area or the more conservative of a religious group that you're familiar with, the more uh, influence and power will be seated with the elders in that community, specifically with the elders, because all of the rules and laws are based on, I have seniority, I have leverage, so it's mine. Mm. Linda, listen. Linda, listen, pay attention and listen to your your head, what it says, and your heart, what it feels, and do what feels right for you. I mean, last I think the last time I said, be yourself, this is, Choose listen love, to yourself. Is what you said too. Yeah, and listen yeah. to yourself and, and go with what feels right. Yeah. Tap, tap into mm -hmm. your intuition that has probably been silenced for a long time. It's been silenced because... It's you were you were told you can't mm -hmm. have your own thoughts and your own feelings. You have to feel and think this way. So find, change that. Find your inner power, your inner peace, and go from there. Yeah. Before we go, do you have a Linda Listen statement? Something that you want to say that maybe pissed you off? Something you want to say to Nicole, or something inspirational that you would like to say to our listeners and viewers out there? Linda Listen. Very few things are good and evil, and a lot of good things can be used for evil purposes, and a lot of evil things have positive effects. So you're standing by your um, newfound skills of female orgasm? Well, they're, they're, I wouldn't give them up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why would you? And also saying, be careful, because things can always go to dark places. Yeah. Anything that's beneficial can also be used against you. It's a great point. That's a great point. I'll take it. I think that with my thoughts of being comfortable with naughty language, because I think we need to go there, I want to give my faith community leaders uh, a loving, fuck you, patriarchal pricks for trying to harm me because that's, that's just very naughty. Yes. And not very ministering of you. And what I want to say to the people who are listening is the best way to deal with sexual shame comes from a song that you might have heard on sexual education, the show that maybe some oh, of you have watched, show. which is Fuck the Shame Away. And there's real, like actual evidence to help you understand that if you do something, over time, the shame will dissipate. So those are my snarky moments for the day. All right, Linda, listen. Uh, this faith crisis you're going through, if you're going through it, is a gift. It's the greatest gift of your life. And even though it's incredibly painful and you will sacrifice relationships and uh, you will grieve it and you will uh, suffer in many ways, uh, the gift that comes out on the other side truly is uh, the best friendships, the best marriages, uh, the best parental relationships, uh, the best identity, and the, the most joy you could ever imagine if you'll just lean into this and uh, experience it and learn and grow and find the right mentor or the right support to help you get there. Beautiful. Is that too long? Was that no, too long? it's great. The longer the better. Uh, it's, I don't know how inspirational this is, but the only thing that comes to my mind that just time and time again is shown to me as the most important thing you can do to improve your life is do not neglect stillness. Do not neglect making time to just be completely still, mm. completely bored, no inputs. You know, whether that's formal meditation or not, doesn't have to be, but don't underestimate the power of 
of staring at a painting for three hours or just stuff that, uh, you know, allows you to see more deeply because I feel like in our society, we're, you know, we're used to constant overstimulation. And so we're so quick to categorize things because we're always on to the next thing. And we like, we miss so much of, for example, like the beauty and richness of nature because we're, we're, we're like spending our life glancing rather than ever looking yeah. deeply. And I just really feel like the best thing most of us can do is make sure we prioritize time to just be completely still. And I know Beautiful. that's not very sexy. Linda listens, but that's what I have to uh, it's do. Linda, great. listen, honey, you gotta be still. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Taylor, do you have one? Oh, can I just say amen to that one? <laughs> I think that's great. <laughs> Linda, listen what she said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have a Linda listen for all the Instagram, social media spiritual influencers like you have no right being a life coach and charging money for any form of workshop or seminar um get a real job <laughs> and uh, put your cigar down and um yeah just get a get a life okay that's that's for the all right those are the people who they know who they are <laughs> yeah and then the positive inspirational one is um linda listen you got out this is amazing Go tell your story and shine your light and don't be embarrassed. It happens to the best of them. My Linda listen would be own where you're at right now. Own it and don't be ashamed and admit that this is where you're at right now. And that could change and change is a sign of growth. I have discovered that our purpose in life, the thing that, that I'm deciding for now is the purpose of our life is to be ourselves. And the more we can lean into our authenticity, the more we are living our purpose. Amen. Linda, listen, be you. Linda, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, listen, Linda. So my Linda, listen is just take time for yourself to breathe, come back home to the breath, get comfortable in the uncomfortable and just allow yourself to just be. I love it. Something that you want to say to our listeners here. Linda, listen. Self-reflexivity is no longer an option, but a necessity. If we are going to survive on this planet, remembering that, like I said, the indigenous cultures have been expanding their consciousnesses, connecting to the earth through the use of these mind expanding substances and plants for thousands of years. And I think it's time that we hop on board to being part of the solution here Amen. instead of the problem. Oh gosh. Linda, listen, uh, explore, be open, try, try something new. And if it doesn't work for you, don't do it again. But if it does, you know, it just, just put it out there, mm -hmm. be open to it. Be open to new possibilities, mm -hmm. do your research, find what works for you, find what may not work for you. Talk to your doctor and want to make sure that you're healthy enough to mm -hmm. do certain substances and just go for it. And my Linda listen is for all those out there who have a lot of judgment towards people like oh. ourselves who dabble in these beautiful medicines. Drop the judgment. <laughs> That's my yes. Linda. Listen, drop the judgment. Listen, honey. <laughs> listen, honey. You don't know what you don't know. And if you are judging us, that's because you don't know the beauty of yeah. it yet. Uh, my Linda listen would be, and I wrote it down because I don't want to murder it, but I okay, put accept everyone for who they are. Stop judging just because they are different than you. Love is supposed to be unconditional. And if your love towards someone is based on conditions, well, then you don't love them at all. So. <gasps> Mic drop, Colette. Okay. <laughs> okay. Keely, how are you going to yeah. follow that up? Don't put a lemon on your ass because it is not going to fix it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, I do have a Linda Listen moment. And it's for people who are inside of the church, outside of the church, anybody People who've never heard of Mormonism. My Linda Lissa moment is we need to eliminate tribalism and to love other people and to create a paradise here on this earth. And we can never do that if we don't start having honest and real conversations about how we reach the conclusions we reach and making space for people who reach different conclusions than ours. We need to start making 
more compassion and less tribalism in this world. That's my Linda Listen for you. That is beautiful, Colby. Thank you for sharing. Linda Listen. Use your voice. This is a safe space. Yes. I love it. <laughs> Mic drop. We don't even need to expand. That's Boom. it. Use your voice. Yeah. <laughs> Linda, listen. <laughs> if you have any concern that you might be a member of a high control group, whether it is an actual organized religion, whether it is a political movement or an online community, the fact that you are thinking that is good. And there is never a downside to double checking. You know, it, it, yes. it's all about harm and, and being honest to yourself. You know, if you're locking off a part of your brain, like you don't want to think about something, that's probably a good sign that, that you should think about it. And it's, it's a win-win because if you do research into your group, religion, whatever it is, and find out that it's true, then you'll be even stronger in your faith. If you do that and find out that it's fake, then you will find out that, uh, you know, it might be a rough road getting out of there, but you at least know that you're not living a lie. So it's always worth Amen. doing the deep dive. Like if you've ever been in a cult or you know, been brainwashed in some type of way and you feel like there is no end, you know, there is. There is There is a way out. There are people that are willing to listen. Um, there are therapists that I can recommend yeah. that have helped me in more ways than one. And, you know, and just to be easy on yourself. Be very easy on yourself that it's, it's not a, it's not a quick process and it's something that you'll probably deal with for the rest of your life. And that's okay. You yeah. know, and you can make it out and it, it wasn't your fault. I will say on the other token of it, you know, if there's any parents out there that have young children, like, please don't force them into anything that you don't know is is good for them. So I think mine's probably going more towards a, a Scientologist or someone who's in Scientology. And I would say, Linda, listen, even if you think you're doing the right thing and realize you have doubt or you have concerns or questions, that's okay. It's okay to question what you believe and what you think and it's okay to believe in some parts of Scientology and apply them and not believe in others. In Scientology, you have to believe in a, it's either you believe in it and work it and do it, or you don't. It's a binary choice. So I would say it's Linda, listen, it's, it's okay to be in the gray area and have indecision and believe and agree with some bits and not other bits. It's okay to have your own thoughts and your own um, determinism and what you read and how people are in Scientology isn't a hundred percent true all the time. Yes. I love it. I'm with you. You know, I love your Linda. Listen, I, I, this is what I would say. And this is what I told my daughter. And I've all, I, I've heard this too. It's like, look, Linda, listen, you're only going to be 19 or 20 for one time in your whole entire life. You have a beautiful body. Show it off. <laughs> be yourself. If you want to dye your hair pink, dye it pink. You want to shave your head, shave your head. It's only hair. It's only clothing. It's only a one-time experience. You're, you know, and now there's also a danger. I'm not telling anybody to do anything crazy dangerous. Hair is not dangerous. I let my boys have long hair. I let my girls wear, you know, tank tops. Those were all things that it was the one time in their life when they can do it. And it's like, you know what? And I say the same thing to 60 year old women. It's like, look, you're only going to be 60 or 65 or 70 one time in your life. If you've always wanted to dye your hair pink or let your hair go gray. That's another thing I talk about. Yeah. There's so many women out there that are terrified to let their hair go gray because some dogma or belief that society has put on them has told them that they can't. And it's like, yes, you can. So girlfriend, do you. You're only going to be on this earth for a short amount of time. Live it to its fullest and embrace the time you have. 
I love it. Linda, listen, be you and express yourself. There you go. One thing that does wind me up is people leaving cults and then joining like political cults and thinking that because they've been in a cult before that they're better equipped to go like full throttle into their other cult. And this has happened to me um, when I've done Jehovah's Witness stuff, because some of the ex-Jehovah's Witnesses have decided that, um, you know, I hold wrong views about some things regarding woke culture or whatever. And to me, because everything is a gray zone, um, and I try to respect people on both sides of the political spectrum and to say, okay, I get why you think this, but these people think that, that's been seen as like um, apostasy and uh you know, and and basically the way that some of the ex Jehovah's Witnesses rounded on me, this has only happened once out of like 350 guests, but it was just one pocket of of ex Jehovah's Witnesses and sort of tweeted about me and made assumptions about me and uh, and started telling others who came on my podcast that they shouldn't associate with oh, me. Oh no! It so perfectly mirrored the exact thing that they were getting. I mean, and I understand it because they grew up with it, but it's so mirrored this idea of like shunning yeah. those who don't believe in the same religion as you. So I guess I would end just by saying to people like, um, I guess always try to be uncertain and to know that as much as it feels really, really right, and you might be right, that that other people count as well. And, and they've even if they're on the complete other side of the spectrum, they won't think they're doing anything wrong because most people just want to I, I really believe that most people think they're doing good for the world mm -hmm. uh, and we should give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, I think I just want to end maybe with a message to Scientologists uh, in the vein of what we've already been talking about, because I know this is something that doesn't even cross many of their minds. And that is um, the effect of bringing up your children um, in this framework that almost almost encourages grooming and, and the effect mm -hmm. that that has on them growing up as people as young adults, you know, the process of auditing is going into a room alone with a stranger and mm -hmm. knowing that you have to subject yourself, you have to follow the commands of this person without question, and you are not allowed to leave. I can tell you that, you know, even though I said I've got mostly positive memories of those younger years and I came out okay, <clears throat> one, one thing during my whole time in Scientology that I was Terrified might be too strong of a word, but I'm going to use terrified, terrified of getting auditing and going into an auditing session. As a child, there was never a single auditing session that I actually wanted to receive. Mm. There was this, um, again, I say terror is too strong of a word. I just don't know. <laughs> I just don't know a lighter word to use because anxious isn't strong enough of a word mm -hmm. of going into an auditing session and knowing I don't want to be doing this but I'm not allowed to say no. I'm not allowed to object. I'm not allowed to say, I don't want to do it anymore once it starts. And I'm not allowed to leave until the auditor says I'm allowed to. And it was horrible. And that was true for my entire time in Scientology. And there's no way that's not true for most children in Scientology. Yeah. And I just, you know, uh, it doesn't even occur to a Scientologist that, uh, oh, my young child is essentially being groomed to never question what uh, an authoritative source tells them to do. And it's not healthy and it's not healthy. So I would just encourage Scientology. A lot of Scientologists end up watching these Scientology videos, even though they're not supposed to. And so I would just say, think about it. Think about it. Cause I know you haven't thought about it before. It's very damaging to children. It's very destructive. Stop forcing your kids to receive auditing. Um, and, and I don't know, some, some food for thought for, for those of you who are still in the bubble. Yeah. Linda, listen, think about it. <laughs> think about it and stop forcing your children and let them be free thinkers. I love it. What is it? Listen, what is it? Lid Linda, look, or is it Linda, Linda listen? listen? Linda, what is listen. It? listen. Linda, listen. <laughs> I would like to say that if you have gone through any sort of adversity in your life, whether it is a cult like what we talk about here, um, whether it's um, an abusive relationship, um, any, any, anything like that, I think to know that there is um, a future, there is hope, I fully believe that time is a beautiful healer. And even if things seem bad right now, like they can and will get better um and you've had the strength to go this far so you can 
uh, go the rest of the way too. That's beautiful. Beautiful advice. You're welcome, Linda. I said you're welcome. Linda, listen, Linda. (laughs) Listen, be yourself and don't tell, don't let other people tell you what to think. Free yourself because you are the most beautiful thing this world has to offer. You are the greatest thing this world has to offer. And you, you alone have the capability to make a new world. My father once said, son, you only have to change one thing in this world. And I said, what's that? He said, you. And another way of putting it, he said, everything, because you are everything. Wow. I love it. That was beautiful. Thank you. Linda, listen, (laughs) it's hard to imagine a big, beautiful, magical life while you're still in one that is so restrictive and controlling of information. So dream big, take, look at somebody in the world that you're like, oh, wow, they're living this incredible life and make that yours because you freaking can, because there's nothing actually in the way you can live the biggest, boldest, free life that you imagine for yourself. And everything that's standing in the way now can be taken care of, can be removed. And I'm not trying to like do this like toxic positivity thing. It's going to be awful. (laughs) The process is going to be terrible. But when you get there, it's going to be so, so good. So it's, it's worth it. Do the hard thing. You deserve the big, beautiful life. I would like to ask a question of the listeners. When you have an enslaved community like this, where you can't leave. And if you leave, you lose your family, you lose your spouse, you lose your children. How much support would society, Jewish and non-Jewish, give for that family who's able to leave with their children, giving them education, giving them life? How much support will a, commu- a healthy community give for a family like this? And I'm always, uh, I'm always, li- uh, have open ears to listen to comments or answers. But I need your Linda listen moment, your spicy <gasps> statement to somebody, or you can go the inspirational route. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. Okay, I'm going to go the inspirational route. And I'm going to encourage every listener to redefine the definition of struggle and realize what an opportunity each challenge that there is in life has gifted us to receive these opportunities and these nuggets of growth that we get that would not present these opportunities without that. And that is not to discredit some people's suffering or to discredit trauma because that is a different kind of struggle. But I'm talking about these moments when we are like, how I am so alone. How can I ever get beyond this and get beyond myself and limitations? And I say, challenge that. First of all, I would just say, fuck anything that tries to take away somebody's autonomy. Yes. Any institution that tries to make you feel that you are wrong for being an individual sovereign person and that you're selfish for living your life. It's your fucking life. You get to choose your life. Um, so that's, that's my passionate thing. And then the other thing, this is more like, this is a choice for the individual, but it's recognizing that same thing internally like the choice that I had to come to, and I'm sure we'll, we'll do that on, on the part two. I got to this point where I had to choose, was I going to live my life based on what I was hearing out there? That could be my church. It could also be a great sounding book in personal development. It could be another religion that I resonate with. Like there's other good stuff. And to me, those are the trickier ones. When it's not obviously bad, like, but here's the difference. It wasn't like good or bad cult or not cult. It was like, do I want to live my life where the most important things that I believe in are externally governed Mm -hmm. or an internal discovery? I do think he's going to be found guilty, but the more the hours tick on, uh, the less confident that I am of that. So we'll see. All right. Well, if I had a Linda listen for this episode, it would be Linda listen. You can't go around assaulting people and expect to have no consequences. That's right. So, Linda listen. Um, when you're in a high demand religion, it's easy to think that the people, you know, the the people directly in your life that are causing your pain. But it's important to like kind of take a step back and think about the those systems of oppression 
that are influencing those people to behave the way that they are. Like, I wanted to blame my dad for a long time for causing me harm or, you know, my principal for a long time for for hurting me. Um, but, and that's not to say that they haven't, but it's important to also think about why they act the way that they do and and put the blame where it actually belongs and where it's justified and where um, we can... The, the places that need to change, which is the people in power yeah. that are actively making choices that um, are op- oppressive to communities and controlling to, you know, for, for individuals, like the rabbis yeah. that abuse their power and the judges that don't take their power seriously and the, you know, the people in with high amounts of power that that aren't taking accountability for their actions. That's those are the people to put your blame on, and um, that can be really helpful for healing. Yes, I love that. Linda, listen, systems, not people. Yeah, Linda, listen, Beautiful. systems, not people. Yes. What about you, Javi? You had a really good one. All right, I'll do that I like one. Yours. Okay, just feels like yours is so deep, but I'm gonna. All right, Linda, listen. <laughs> When you're faced with a a big decision or when you're feeling stuck, uh, what I like to do is think about if this were my child, what would I want for them? You are also a child. And so when you're in a situation where where you need to like get out of an oppressive religious environment or make that big change, um, you can be a parent to your own child, to yourself. And you can demand that that child gets the best possible life. So do that for yourself and do that for your inner child, just like I would do it for mine, Mm -hmm. just like you would do it for your future child or an existing child, because you deserve all the things also. Spicy statement to someone who's pissed me off. (laughs) All right. Yeah. um, My spicy statement to the cult is... You cannot traffic children, film it, and think nobody's ever coming for you. I'm definitely Mm. coming for you. And the way you put a church out of business is taking all their money. So Uh, that's my spicy statement. I have a really good one for the next half. Oh, yes. My sassy statement is to any men that have been in the military, which is to say... If you have a problem with me saying that the military, any branch, has a problem with rape culture, then I am going to conclude one of two things. You either were such a good guy that you just couldn't see it. That's the definition of privilege. That's the category my husband was in for his 20 years. Or you're one of the predators. Because Mm. I can't, I can't come up with any other reason why all these good men are not screaming about their sisters in arms having a one in three chance of being assaulted while they wear the uniform. And we know it's much higher than that. I'll go first because you go with the inspirational stuff. So for me, (laughs) for me in a nutshell, I, I really just believe that we know right from wrong. I feel like it's really that simple. But we have the choice. We can look at ourselves and make the correct choices that we need for ourselves. And also when we do wrong, we know we do wrong. And if we do wrong, then we have to accept that. And then we have to apologize for that and also recognize that and move on. And just love people. Yeah. Just love people. Yeah. Just love upon people. There That's it. Hey, Linda, listen, morality is inherently innate in all of us. And you don't need religion to tell you how to be good because you you already know how to be a good person. Oh, you put that so much. <laughs> I mean, you laid you, uh, so you laid the groundwork. I just uh, I just built the bricks on top. Uh, all right, Rome, what do you got for me? I mean, honestly, it's it's my my quote that I live by is it's, it's be motivated, be great, be encouraged. Um, and that's just for anybody who's in the position where they are, you know, trying to transition um, into a new way of life, and you know they have their doubts. Just be encouraged. Just be encouraged and stay motivated and, and try to be the, the greatest person or the greatest version of you while you're doing it. Um, I think those three things are, are just huge. Linda, listen, it is not your fault. You did not ask for this and you can escape the situation that you're in. Yes. I love it. So good just to the point. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing, Daisy. Uh, It's not your fault. 
none of this is your fault. Like I took it a lot as it was my fault in my childhood when things weren't perfect. I took it as it was my fault. I needed to be a, a mini mom, a better mom, even though I wasn't a mom to my siblings. And uh, then I took it as it was my fault in Mormonism and that I needed to be a better human being and I don't know, just all of it. I, t- I always took it as my fault when something was going wrong, which is a very common reaction when you are in a high control group or a cult or anything. Like you, you're the scapegoat in their story and uh, it's not your fault. And what I, I think that's my Linda lesson. I'll say it with more sass this time. Like it is not your fault, girl. <laughs> it is not your fault. <laughs> like, Oh my gosh, yeah. I love that so much. You get a lot of people doing sassy? sassy Not very stuff? many. I would love a sassy. <laughs> okay. It's been a while since I've had a sassy. Huh. I'll have to think of one. But I, all I can think of it that, that's important to be saying is I know there's going to be a lot of people that are watching that are from FLDS or from the Order or from the AUB. And a lot of them don't know about Holding Out Help. And I mm. always... Is it possible we could leave the link to Holding Out Help in the description box? Absolutely. Down below? Yes. Yeah. Holding on help is a, um, they helped me when I first left the order and they are, they, they give housing to people who are in need, who are leaving polygamous relationship. Cause a lot of us don't have anywhere to go. So if you are someone who is needing, um, therapy or a place to go or just uh, to be able to get away from the abusive polygamous relationship that you're in, um, holding out help has a hotline phone number that you can call and get more information. And even if you just want to call just to know what the resources are, yeah. then that information is always, it's always in my description box in my videos. And then it will be in this one. The sassy statement. All I can think of is just like, don't, don't boink your sisters. <laughs> like, <laughs> Say, like, I just don't know why I have to be even saying that, but, like, there's so many fish in the sea that you don't need to be doing you that. You don't but need also, to be doing that. <laughs> don't bonk your scissors, yeah. <laughs> my dad, yeah, he's still doing that. Oh, my gosh. I, I can't I, I can't do it because I, I can't tell him not to because he's it's in the name of the Lord and you can't tell him he's doing anything wrong. Yeah, if you are in a cult or by extension domestic violence... There is so much joy and happiness and peace on the other side. Mm. A promise that the hardest thing to do is to leave. And it reminds me of Indiana Jones when he steps onto the walk of the bridge of faith or whatever. And I hate that thought for like getting out of religion, but you take the step to leave a bad relationship. You take the step to leave a bad situation. And I promise if you take that step, the things come together. You just keep working at it and you will find happiness and you will find peace and goodness. I absolutely promise. I love that. Linda, listen, you have to say, do I say, do I say Linda, listen, Linda, listen, Linda, Lisa, and Linda. <laughs> um, Linda listen. So just, I would just like to say that there are so many people that find themselves in these types of situations that I found myself in and that the shiny, happy people find themselves in that have uh, uh, hopefully a lot of them feel a lot in a better place now that have escaped it. But there is hope. That's what I want to share. There is hope. Uh, I, I've found that uh, for myself that come from a place where there didn't seem like there was any way, anywhere to go, anywhere to turn. Uh, number one, there's a lot of wonderful, wonderful people in this world that are not a part of these groups that we thought were the only true, true, I guess, the, tr- the only truth. <laughs> there's a lot of wonderful people that are willing to help and that want to help uh, us that are trying to move forward from these different situations. And there's just a lot of wonderful things in this life that are out there for anyone that is willing to search for them and just... Um, change their life around. You know, that's, that's what I've been able to do for myself. And it's been wonderful. Amazing. I love it. Melissa, what's yours? <laughs> so I would say, Linda, listen, yes. I would say for all of my Lindas that are in some type of spiritual journey of their own or any type of faith transition, um, I would say to not try to create a finish line while you're still in the middle of your journey. I think when I started my spiritual journey, I felt like at, there was going to be this end point. Like, oh, I just have to get to where I know this mm. or I want to feel that or that there's something. And I would say to enjoy the journey and not place 
a finish line because it's going to be ongoing and you never know where you're going to end up. And if you try to place it on one road and you end up over here, you might feel like that's off, but over there might be where you're meant to be. Linda, listen, you're not going to go to hell for wearing jeans. <laughs> <laughs> you are not. Wear the jeans, girl. Wear the jeans. <laughs> Linda, listen, if you think you're not in a cult and you're too afraid to do the research and maybe check into your own beliefs, that's probably a sign that you might be in a cult. So watch these documentaries, write a list of the ways they're culty and see if you see some similarities. And if you don't, congratulations, you're not in a cult and you were brave enough to do the exercise. <laughs> and mine's going to be very similar and maybe even repetitive. Mine will be simply Linda Listen. Nobody thinks they're in a cult when they're in a cult. So <laughs> sometimes seeing cult documentaries are the way that you can actually uh, identify the water that you didn't even know you were swimming in. So check yes. out cult documentaries, not just to make fun of or empathize with people who have been abused in other traditions, but maybe to find out that you've been uh, in high demand religion or cult yourself. You know, the one thing I, I, I the one Linda listen thing I, I keep thinking about, you know, Linda listen, nobody else knows shit about you. Only oh, you know. Oh, yes. You know? Hmm. Like, you know, in there, you know, it's your, it's your nervous system. It's your heart. It's your soul. Like, you know, you know, you know, whatever it is, you know, P yeah. other people don't know. Linda, listen, follow your instincts. Yeah. Linda, listen, follow your effing instincts. Yeah. Yes. Linda, listen. Life is not better when you are ignorant. Oh, he brought it around, guys. He brought it around. And with that, follow your highest excitement. <laughs> be conscious and be well. Wait. I, I, I love that you do this. And, uh, and, and I think, I think for me, the Linda listen, um, your past, your trauma does not define you. Yes. Uh, it, it is absolutely an aspect of who you are what you've been through, but it doesn't determine the outcome for anyone. I should be homeless in jail or dead. Uh, and uh, huh. the fact that I have the life that I have now, it's, uh, it's overwhelming. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just so incredibly grateful. You know, I had a, I had a moment last night, uh, hanging out with my families and my nephews and my three little nephews are, are giving us a concert mm. <laughs> singing veggie tale songs yes, to us and, <laughs> and realizing just how incredibly grateful I am for the life that I have. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I just cannot. If you're watching this and you think that there's no hope, there absolutely is. Yeah. Um, and the opportunity that I have today to get to, to get to work with people and, and, and help them, uh, because they battled some of the same demons, they've been through some of the same trauma. Um, it, it's just, uh, it's just the coolest thing in the world. Yeah. It really is. Thank you so much for sharing that. Words. Listen, Linda. <laughs> Give it to me. <laughs> I say, listen, Linda, um, don't send your kids to camps to improve their behavior. Conversion camps, wilderness camps, triple teen camps. They are, they are just ruses for horrific abuse, child labor, and in many, uh, many places, actual, you know, physical, sexual trafficking and stuff like that. Yeah. Amen. Also, don't home, don't homeschool your children with the intention of raising Christian nationalists either. Right. There's that too. Saying something to someone who's pissed you off or if you want to go the inspirational route, that's okay too. What do you think I'm going to do? I feel like you're going to go sassy. I really <laughs> hope you go sassy. <laughs> you know I'm going to go sassy. Yes. Lay it on me. There's, there's, there's a time to be inspiring, but you know what? This ain't it. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the sass. Linda, listen, Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me. He didn't say, make the little children suffer. Stop abusing kids and calling it biblical. Girl, oh, preach. And thanks a lot for the trauma. <laughs> thanks a lot for the trauma. Girl, preach. 
my Linda Listen, which by the way, I freaking love that clip. So <laughs> that's so funny. Linda Listen. Just because someone or something is giving you all the good feels and makes you happy in the moment doesn't mean that is the only place to find happiness. Yes. I guarantee you can find that same serenity, happiness, friendship in other places. And frankly, they'll be nicer to you. Linda, listen, if you show up for an interview and they immediately to take, ask you to take your clothes off, <laughs> maybe that's a red flag. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Maybe do a closed interview. It's an idea. <laughs> and with that here right now, the 70th episode, 70,000 subscribers. We want to celebrate you guys for all of your encouraging words, not only for us, but for our guests that you leave. Thanks so much, guys, for listening to the end. Thank you for supporting the channel. It really means the world. When you subscribe, you are becoming an advocate for these people who are coming forward and telling their stories. If you want to support even further, aside from liking and sharing, which the algorithm loves, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash cults to consciousness and... Follow your highest excitement, be conscious, and be well.